going to take you through the listing flow step by step. As you can see here, eBay wants to charge you $1.50 for the subtitle. That's not worth it. Let's leave this out. On custom label, I also recommend you just leave this one out. The category is what we selected when we initially started the process. I think this is correct. And on add a second category here as well, I do not recommend doing it because it costs money. For store categories, you can just ignore this for now. And on condition, we're going to say it's new. All right, let's talk about images. You cannot underestimate the importance of good quality images. If the title can attract a lot of customers, the good images will make sure that people actually click on your product. As you can see from here, there is a lot of competition for nativity scenes, and that's a very niche item. So the better your picture is, the more likely people will be to click on So what is the difference between a good image and a bad image? A good image will be high resolution. I would recommend to have a resolution of 1600 times 1600 pixels if possible. The minimum should be 500 times 500 pixels. Second, I strongly recommend you take your pictures on a white background. This will make the image fit much better within the experience of eBay or other marketplaces. And finally, I recommend that you take not only one image, but that you take multiple photos from different angles so that the consumers can see your product in all its beauty. The statistics from eBay show that the more images you upload, the more likely you are to make a sale. To upload a photo, click on Add Photos, find it on your computer, and just double click to upload it. As you can see, all my photos are on white background and I have multiple angles and details. I'm just going to select all the photos at once and upload them. There are a few very useful tools that you can use in case your photos are not yet fully optimized. For example, on this photo here, the background is not fully white. I can actually play with the contrast here and it will turn white if I push these two faders up a little bit. Let's hit save. And here we go. We have a perfect picture with a perfectly white background. Another very useful functionality is the crop function. For example, let's say I want to zoom in on this picture to show more detail. I can click on crop and I can select a part and just hit save. And let's see what happens. So we now have a section that is much more detailed. This is it for the pictures. I think I'm quite satisfied with these nine very nice pictures with lots of angles, with lots of detail and with a beautiful white background. So we can now move forward and go down the listing flow. Next up is item specifics. Quite honestly, I don't think that the item specifics are that important. It's good, however, to include some of the details of your products because the keywords that you include here, eBay will actually use them to bid on Google AdWords. So it might give you more visibility with international customers. For brand, let's put handmade. Modified item, just say no. For year, just put in the year of manufacture. And country, let's put the country of manufacture. For this part here, you can just ignore it. Let's leave the item description for now and come back later. First, I want to look at the price and the price format. For price format, just select fixed price. You don't have to worry about the start and duration here. But very important, the price. So we have already calculated the price. Let's see. We said it's 
$89.90. So let's put in the price here, $89.90. On best offer, you can actually let buyers make an offer. That means they can say, hey, you know, I'm not willing to pay $89, but I can pay you 85. And you can click here if you wanna accept such offers. Um, it's up to you if you wanna do that. My experience is that it has helped a couple of sellers made more sales. And if you have some flexibility on your margin, you can do that. On quantity, just put in the quantity that you have on offer for eBay. The next part here, you can just ignore. And then on sales tax, because you're selling from outside of the US, you actually don't have to include anything here. On payment options, select PayPal and include the email address that you have used for your PayPal account. Very, very important, make sure that you write the email address correctly. If you don't, you will not be able to receive payments from international customers. And I had a couple of cases with some of my sellers where this happened. It's very annoying. So it is really worth to double check that the email address is correct. Then require immediate payment. This means that when an eBay buyer does the purchase, the payment is automatically done via PayPal. I would recommend to do that. Returns can be a tricky topic, especially international returns. What I recommend you do is you do accept returns. However, you have the buyer pay for the return shipping unless there is something wrong with the item. So basically, if the buyer simply changes their mind, you will ask them to pay for the shipping. If the item was broken or if you sent the wrong item, then you will pay for the return shipping. And the way to set it up is you're gonna click here on domestic returns accepted, return shipping paid by the buyer. And we're gonna do the same here for international returns. So we're gonna accept it and we're gonna say return shipping paid by the buyer. Regarding replacement or exchange available, I recommend you just leave it as is. It's much more convenient to just send a refund. Now, it would be a good idea to clearly spell out your terms and conditions, including returns conditions, to your customer. The way we can do that is we can go back to item description. And this is where we're going to include all the kind of detail that we would like our buyers to know.